Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with Thrifty Thursday, Thrifty Connects, but also a little haul from my local um, paper store because, um, yeah, I had to get art glitter glue and so um, I may have fallen down the rabbit hole a little bit because I actually had some store credit too. So <laughs> I was like, hmm, what can I get into? So I didn't get all, like, well, I got a bit, not, not a ton, but a bit. Um, I thought I'd share it with you. So these are new. They just came out. They're called Dress My Craft Transfer Me Abstract Faces. This is the item number here. There's a bunch of different ones in all different styles. I decided to go with these because I just felt like they were really quirky and interesting. So yeah, they're like eyes and interesting faces, right? So something a little different. And you can use them on like wood and glass and other things too. Um, and then I grabbed a couple pieces of this beautiful paper. Um, this is from Simple Stories, Simple Vintage Life in Bloom. And I just really love both of these. These are the kind of papers that I like to use um, as my end papers on my inside of my spine or my um, covers rather. So sometimes, you know, certain papers just kind of like inspire me. And then there are new Minte books, and I always pick these up when I see them because I just, I really love them. Um, Minte papers are beautiful. And this is Flora Book 7, so they've, they've had six before this one. I don't have those. I have like maybe two of them. Um, but they're just for like fussy cutting. And like they have, I mean, you could use it as a page as well because both sides are, are, you know, something is on them. The back side is printed. Um, but they're really great when you just need like a, a really pretty fussy cut. And I, I really loved these flowers. I thought they were so nice and dark. And um, there's usually, you know, about six different patterns and you get it about like three or four times. So they're quite generous little books. And um, I kind of keep them right at the back of my desk. And if I need like something, I, I will grab from them. And this is the greenery book. And this is all leaves and green backside pages. Um, they're really pretty as well just leaves you know sometimes you need a little leaf and this is like a heavy cardstock weight paper it's a really nice quality paper and then there's flora book six which i also didn't have so i was like okay i'll just grab flora book six and seven because i just love them i think they're so beautiful so those are my papery kind of things. And then I got this. I've been looking at it for a super long time, back and forth. Like, I don't need this, but I want it. And I, I was like, hmm. So recently I was thinking like, I, I don't know, I was watching um, a video where I was like reading a big conversation going on on maybe Facebook. I don't know. And I guess like the Stampin' Up! Stamparatus I guess is the equivalent to what this is, which is like a stamping platform has been discontinued. And, um, then there was all this conversation about like the, the Misto ones, which I thought when I looked at them, they're just excessively expensive. In my opinion, I was like, I am not paying $90 for a simple, like stamping platform. I mean, no, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, what is Misto doing for me? that I will spend that. Nothing. You're not in any way, you know, you're not grooming my dog or anything. You're not taking me out on a date. You're just costing me a lot of money. But these, this was $19.99. I haven't used it yet. I probably will do a video or something. But I talked to the woman who owned the store um, and she said she really likes it. She said, you know, I've been, she's been using, um, some like different products with them and she just really likes them so I was like okay yeah I, I can stand by that um what else what else what else so yeah that's what I got and um yeah a little little purchase from our local shop so give me two seconds and I will just get everything kind of ready um to show you my thrift haul Okay, so saddle in, get yourself a cup of tea or something, because I have a little bit of a thrift haul. I have a, a big thrift haul today, unexpectedly so. Um, so I started out by going to our local animal shelter thrift store because I had some things to donate, and also I was looking for um, 
like one of those balls you put in your dog's water to make them not gulp like excessively because my dog does that a little bit and I found one so um that was another thing I didn't feature here but I also found this says Jaguar and I don't know if it's related to the car brand Jaguar I don't know but what these are is a set of um extremely pretty um what are they called friends cufflinks sorry so it's two cufflinks and they're like really glitzy and iridescent and pretty and then there's this little i guess it's like a pin like a corsage pin maybe i don't know and then this little clip that has little flowers on it that i thought was just so pretty so yeah, I, I just got these. I may give them to my husband. I don't know. I may not. I may keep them because they're shiny and I'm a magpie. Um, okay, then I got a lot of books today. So the, the other thing is, so books at this store are 50 cents, like almost always. That's the thing that they have on sale because they don't have a lot of space for books. So like they try to just clear them out. Um, so this is a field guide to wildflowers. It's a Peterson field guide and it's a pretty little book and um, it's got lots of fun. It's got black and white but it's also got color plates and they're pretty. Lots of black and white. This one doesn't have as many color plates as some of the other field guides. But they come kind of in these chapter beginning kind of sections. So you get like, you know, 10 color ones and then, you know, probably 20 to 30 of the black and white. And then I found this book and it's not for journaling, but it is pretty. It's called At, um, at Large and At Small, Confessions of a Literary Hedonist. And first I saw this paper and I was like, this looks so good. And then I was like, what is this about? So I'll read the intro to you. In At Large and At Small, Anne Fadiman returns to one of her favorite genres, the familiar essay, a beloved and hollowed literary tradition recognized for both its intellectual breadth and its miniaturist focus on everyday experiences. With her wonderful combination of wit and erudition, Fadiman draws us into 12 of her personal obsessions, from her slightly sinister childhood enthusiasm for catching butterflies to her monumental crush on Charles Lamb, from her wistfulness for the days of letter writing to the challenges and rewards of moving from the city to the country. Many of these essays were composed under the influence of the subject at hand. Fadiman divulges her passion for haagen chocolate chocolate chip ice cream and her brother's homemade liquid nitrogen coffee Kahlua recipe included. She sustains a terrific caffeine buzz while recounting Balzac's coffee addiction and she stays up till dawn to write about being a night owl, examining the rhythms of our circadian clocks and sharing such insomnia cures as her father's nocturnal word games and Lewis Carroll's mathematical puzzles. This is a perfect book for life's passionate obsessives. So I thought it sounded quite charming and I will enjoy reading that, I think. Um, then I, I did get a few children's books today. So I'll tell you more when I get on to the next one. But yeah, this is Supposes, written and illustrated by Dick Gackenbach. What a name. What a name. <laughs> um... It's like his last name was already Gackenbach, and then his parents were like, I know, let's call him Dick and make his whole entire existence difficult with his name. So this is from 1989, and it's super cute. Suppose a pig painted a fence. He put on three coats. <laughs> Suppose a cat ate lemons. She would turn into a sourpuss. But yeah, you get it. It's pretty cute. Nice drawings too. It's really sweet. And then I found, I always laugh at this book because <laughs> this old man, this man, he looks so out of place. The Victorian Flower Garden by Jennifer Davies and this man for some reason, I guess he's a BBC presenter maybe, so it's a big blue book. Language and Poetry of Flowers is here. So this book is not super old. Um, and I've seen it before. Uh, 1991 but it does have and I'll probably go through it like I mean there's some really nice um, writing in here too but like there's really pretty images too lots of nice images it is the kind of book that I'll probably process 
Um, I'll probably read a few things and then I will process it just to the pages that like I want to keep because um, I don't want to have all of it in my studio. Okay, that's that. And I picked up another copy of Where the Wild Things Are. I have one already. I've made a Where the Wild Things Are journal. If you search on my channel here, you'll find it. Um, and it was relatively early in my journal making days and I really enjoyed it. And I just, I love Maurice Sendak. So I may, I may go back to that. I think I will. That's why I got another copy of it. Then I found these three books. This is a collection called Bellamy's Changing World by David Bellamy with illustrations by, oh my gosh, the talented Jill Dow. I've seen a couple of her other illustrated books. I, I don't even recall, like one had these like flip out pages and it was just really beautiful. So I recognized her illustration style first, like this toad. I knew I'd seen him before. So I'm going to read these with my children um, and then they will they will find their way into journals because like the images are just gorgeous but I do want to read them with the kids because they're they're like up our alley and my daughter's in nature school right now um, for this uh, semester I have all this stress because I have all this like the season is kind of you know coming to an end in terms of like the classes and things that I have her in and I have to like <laughs> I have to do it all again. I have to find the things and sign her up and wake up at five in the morning to try to get her a place when I have to get online and like, you know, uh, the trials and tribulations of parenting. <laughs> but this is Thrifty Thursday, not Whiny Wednesday, so I'll move on. <laughs> but see what I mean? They're just beautiful, charming books. Um, so that's my haul from the local... Um, animal shelter thrift store which is a cool cool store with really great volunteers now all this stuff um almost so i went today um hold on <laughs> i went today to a nearby um city that i often go to and then i i had seen that there was a book sale in kitchener today at the brythopt community center I don't know if I'm saying that right but it's today and tomorrow so I went there and they had um like the books are like two dollars I think for hard covers a dollar for soft cover and children's books were five for a dollar and then some books were three dollars like like coffee table size ones I think and then it was so strange they had one table and there was a woman sitting at it and it was they they said older or rare books or something special books so i went to that table first because like that's the kind of books i'm looking for and the weirdest thing is first of all like when you got to the table let me see if i can demonstrate so imagine there's a woman sitting behind the table well she had lined the books up like she's behind the spines and they're all like this and i'm like are you kidding me like you're back here and I'm over here how do I like do this and there was like a ton of space at the front of the table so like I couldn't even like easily kind of pull them out and look and then she had like all these price stickers in them like five fifteen dollars like, oh my gosh so I just walked away from that craziness I like <laughs> I took a quick look and went yeah not today um but anyways the rest of the book sale was awesome it was really well organized into like sections on different tables so it made my life easier because I only had like 20 minutes to look because it was kind of a do you want to do this oh sure end of day kind of thing so first I'm so happy I found another copy of Grandfather Twilight so if you've been following me for a little while it wasn't long ago that I made a book a journal with this book and I absolutely love this book it's so special and I don't know if I'll make another journal or if I'll just hoard it it's just a wonderful book so that one's on the I don't know pile um then I got one I think I got two copies of this yes I did okay so I don't know if you had the joy of reading this book when you were a kid Miss Nelson is back but I remember this book fondly as a, a, a trouble a little troublemaker when I was a kid and we had a substitute teacher oh, there's <laughs> Viola Swamp 
I have memories of this book and I thought what a cool book um, to maybe make a journal with and so I got two copies of it that are a little bit different um, in their color which is funny um, but like it's always helps to, when you're making a storybook journal if you want to make a nice fat kind of beefy journal like the ones I like to make to have more than one copy of the book um, then there was an old woman who lived in a shoe I thought this is so this is a nice like Victorian style copy of like these stories I just liked the illustrations I thought they were sweet there's some nice little stories in there and yeah it's fun and obviously this would be really fun to do something with like, I could see like I, I will clean it up um, but like it would be really cute as the center in a signature as, the, as a folio and this looked like a cute story Susie and Alfred in the P night of the paper bag monsters by Helen Craig and it's like these two little pigs I'm getting so soft in my in my young age here guys I like <laughs> I'm literally looking at books today and I'm like oh another children's book like what is happening to me? I was like making all these like <laughs> journals that were like, I don't know. I'm just becoming, I'm becoming a human cheese ball. I think we I don't know. I go back and forth, <laughs> but it's so cute. Um, and then, okay. So I'm currently working on, well, like collecting all my materials because I went through would you believe it all my books the other day and I pulled out the books I've been collecting for a long time to do retro 80s and 90s nostalgia books that are gonna have like a they're gonna have like a, a feeling of Saturday morning cartoons because they're gonna be like elements like the cartoons that we watched in the 80s and the early 90s but also the, the toy commercials that played in between so things like Teddy Ruxpin, Fraggles, Muppet Babies, um, Popples, My Little Pony, um, Rose Petal Palace or Place, um, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. So, Wuzzles, um, so yeah, I'm collecting a bunch of stuff and I think what I'm going to do, um, is I'm going to make, I don't know how many journals I'm going to make because I think I have enough material to make a nice big collection of them like probably eight to ten um which sounds very daunting to me at the moment but i know i'm gonna get transported i'm gonna go right back to my childhood i'm gonna get super into this i'm already kind of feeling it and i'm gonna have a lot of fun um and so i'm gonna make two kind of aesthetics and I don't want to call them like for boys and for girls because the 80s like I used to think the 80s and 90s were like so bad for gendering things but these days I feel like it's almost worse because now there's like weird politics attached to it and all of it's bad all of it have absolutely all of it's bad um so when I was a kid I played with all the toys gender wasn't a thing for toys in my household really um although I say that knowing that I live in a society that's like super biased so it's like it was everybody's was but um I'm gonna just stick with the aesthetics because I have things like um you know Star Wars um like oh I don't know like stuff that was sold toward the boy side the G.I. Joe's all that kind of stuff and I feel like the aesthetic of those books like they wouldn't work if I put like My Little Pony next to like Insectors you know what I mean like it just would get weird so I think I want to use that as a guide so anyways I'm rambling on here Teddy's Winter Adventure my favorite Teddy Ruxpin character was Grubby. I had a Teddy Ruxpin when I was a kid with the tape. I think I actually bought an, another one that's in my toy collection that's currently packed up. I always, always, always wanted Grubby, like the, the Caterpillar plush toy that went with Teddy Ruxpin. He also had a cassette tape, but he was insanely expensive. And my parents were like, heck no we are not spending our money on this crazy caterpillar and they didn't and I am still traumatized I'm just kidding I'm not but <laughs> but it kind of am so then I got these books look at these these are so cute and they're like they look the same right like the same kind of book collection different um illustrators though Tom Badger goes skating and Richard Rabbit, Rabbit goes boating so I don't know maybe they're they're the Medici books for children I'm guessing 1977 printed in England um 
of course more anthropomorphic animals totally up my alley and this kind of looks like a santa or a gnome kind of guy um so i could see this coming in handy around christmas time if i if i decide to actually make a christmas journal or something which i may do this year you know i'm not like into holidays or anything but like i, I don't know i think it might be Catherine brown artist um sunnyside studios who each year pulls me closer to the fold of wanting to do something with christmas because she just makes christmas feel very charming journal wise to me um oh, so is this a medici it is yeah okay so it's the same collection but like look at these animals are these cute a little boat yeah okay then we have gem holly hobby i just saw the frog um is this woman's name holly hobby for real <laughs> gem um yeah i i guess her name is holly hobby but look at the frogs i really was like okay i gotta get this it's so cute and i actually have a fairy frog folio that i started when i went on that huge fairy journal making journey and it's not done it's like sitting in my basket of like i have a few baskets of like projects to do and it's there okay so then um i also went to the mission thrift today these books came from there this book was a dollar um oh there's a little sort of a half sticker on there I'm going to take it off because this has a nice textured cover and I don't want to let it sit for too long because I don't want it to stick to it. This has like um, a really nice feel to it. It's like hard to explain. You can feel the crackle to it, but it's like this, you know, golden color with some like deep mauve. And this is gems of the world's best classics. There were two of them. I only took one. I felt like it's such a beautiful book. I'm like, somebody else will find joy in this too, maybe. So let's just leave one because it's not like I am starving for books. Although you would think that I was because we got a few books today um, by Llewellyn Jones. What a cool name Llewellyn is, right? So many L's and it's just really neat. What year? 1927. This is a little older than I even thought. No illustrations, but yeah, really great cover. And this one is Villette. Can you see how beautiful this is? A Charlotte Bronte book. Look at that beautiful, um, you know, embossing. It's on the spine too. I think I will gild that. It's just beautiful. This is an older book. I don't know the year, but like, look at this. That's such a pretty book plate. Um, yeah, I have a feeling this won't have a year. There was a whole, you know, period of time where, and it's usually the books that have these Bible feeling pages that they just don't have years in them. So it's turn of the century-ish, you know, probably early 1900s, I would guess. And then Audubon Birds, this little book, I was like, I'm not paying $4 for it, but it's a bird book. And it's the lovely little, like a small version of the Audubon plate. So these images, just so you know, are in the public domain and they have been made available through um, a museum online. If you Google like Audubon, you know, bird um, museum, public domain, <laughs> you'll find it, but they're beautiful and it's just a nice little book. So I got it. I was like, it's too cute. Okay, so now we're headed back to the stuff I got from the book sale. So these are still the children's books that were five for um, a dollar. And he only charged me for seven books. So like, I don't know, that was like a dollar twenty-five, but I had more than seven. He, he was like distracted when he was counting. So I don't know. I basically paid like a dollar for all the children's books or dollar twenty-five. The Machine at the Heart of the World sounded really interesting at the heart of the world there was a machine and Theobald looked after it from his machine Theobald made the weather helped the plants grow and kept the stars in their places until things began to go wrong this is from Puffin Books um, 1983 
So Theobald looks after the heart of the world, this machine. What a wonderful concept. This is like, oh, look at that image. That's awesome. I love her hair. You know, it's just, this is the kind of thing that just makes me go like, oh, storyteller journal. I just love it. I love getting to put someone's story in a journal. And then we have Chanticleer and the Fox. And I got this because it's from Troll and it's from 1958. And um, the, I love the illustrations. They're just really nice. The florals are really pretty. Yeah. Lots of lovely pictures. Okay, and then this book, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But like, look at this art. I was, it's so beautiful. Pictures by Nancy Eckholm Burkert. So she's a great artist. Um, it's a large book paperback and it's from 1972. Look at that. You know, just so pretty. Seriously. I feel like these are all just like journal cover worthy type images. Oh, this little tiny guy. He's the cutest of the dwarf, the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, yeah, but like really cool art. Yep. Okay, then, oh, Garbage Delight. I picked this up for my daughter. Um, yeah. So this isn't for journaling, but this is Poems by Dennis Lee, Pictures by Frank Neufeld. I have a couple copies of this book already, but I want this one for my daughter um, because it's a really fun book. And then I found this June 29th, 1999. I have no clue what this date is, um, but this book, it won a bunch of awards and I was intrigued and I thought I'll probably read it and maybe read it to my kiddos. So it's from, where's the date? 1992. So it was, he was writing about the future. <laughs> hmm. So this girl launches these vegetable seedlings into the sky. She's like a scientist and things go a little awry. You know, I have the perfect... This reminds me of the um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs journal that I made. This story, you know, has the giant food. And I have a food landscapes book that's kind of along the same lines. We may bring those books together. And then I found Dragon Sandwiches. Written by Gwendolyn McHugh and illustrated by Maureen Paxton. And this is just another of these kind of books that make me go like, oh, you know, your imagination is awesome. 1987 love these illustrations. I love the green hair. Yeah, just another cool book. <laughs> I love all the green and blue hair. And then I found this also at the book sale, Edward Gorey address book. And so I love Edward Gorey. Um, and these are nice, heavy, like index pages. So I'll probably use like these too. I'll probably dye them or something. I don't know. And then these thicker ones, I'll probably make like, you know, journal fodder with or possibly folios. Like I'll make journal cards and stuff, ephemera. Um, okay, let's keep going. Okay, a few non-book things. So I got from the Mission store this nice pillowcase trim that's been like um, stitched with, you know, embroidery floss. And then I found some nice vintage seam bindings and a bit of rickrack. And then postcard size 4x6 uh, pr printer paper. Um, 
or, or not printer paper, sorry, um, a printer, um, what's this called? <laughs> an ink cartridge, thank you. Yeah, and it also does come with a pack of paper. So um, that is going to be good to go into the EP50 that I have for the selfie camera. Um, okay, then, oh, I didn't even show you this. I set it over here. Sorry, I got distracted by the, the paper. I didn't realize there was more paper in there. Um, so this is a beautiful little book, and I got this. It's called um, Unbeen and Sintram by Fook. What a beautiful cover, right? These tiny little books, oh, they're just so pretty. And there's Undine. And I don't know the date, because again, it's this decade of things that were turn of the century that they didn't put dates on, but how beautiful. And then they had a relatively large um, section of books that were um, international languages, mostly German. This one's been repaired, um, but I'm going to remove all this. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to use the, uh, take it off now actually before it gets stuck on there too much. Um, and I'm going to use the beautiful book for something else. I'll leave this here. I just didn't want it to get all sticky from the weird other tape. There's some book tape. Look at the color of these pages. They're so like old and lovely. And it's that amazing, you know, German font. I don't know what this means. I have no idea. And then I found this through the, was it postern gate? I couldn't tell, but it's got some nice embossing. This book's quite weathered. The spine has definitely seen better days. The back, <laughs> it's like, save me. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll fix this. We'll do something with this. I have an idea already. Um, no book is beyond me. Look at that lovely art, 1912, through the postern gate. So this book was in the history section or no literature section of the sale. And I thought, oh, it's just, that's such a lovely old book. We have to do something with it. And then this was from the international section, Le Repertoire de la Cuisine. It's a French book, um, Pop Spice. This is weird. I'll go my hospitality specialist. This must have been like a chef's book. There was a big cookbook section, um, but I got it for these. Look at these tab pages, aren't they fun? I don't normally get like even French, you know, um, reference, like food reference books. This is like a thicker page, like a reference to all the sections of the book. And I just thought it was a lot of fun. Um, then this little book, just an itty bitty little one, but I got it for the pages because they're the old German. It's from 1941. And it's just so nice. I love to like use these as a background for a journal card or a collage. Like they're just great. And then a Cabbage Patch Kids book, Xavier's Fantastic Discovery. That's of course going to go in the pile of books I'm hoarding for the the retro throwback journals. So set that with Teddy Ruxpin. Oh, and then I found. Um, one other thing, I was just look, looking around, you might have heard me get distracted when I was looking at the stuff I got from my paper store. So I decided I would pick up one of these um, Simon Hurley Lunar Paste um, products. They look really cool. I've been watching his um, Instagram, Simon Hurley, H-U-R-L-E-Y, if you haven't heard of him. But he's like... Um, He's, he's a, another influencer with Ranger now, so, um, or, or a product designer with Ranger. So yeah, his, his work doing like embossing, inking, and this lunar paste type stuff, it's very beautiful. And he, you know, you can smoosh it through a stencil. Um, yeah, it's really beautiful. And anything iridescent, if you know me, is like, <sighs> so then we have this German book, um, also from the the book sale and it's got lovely old pages printed in germany um not seeing a date but you know again it's like early 1900s i would imagine it was gifted in 1945 
and I love the pages. See the border? Like every page here is the perfect little background for a collage or a journal card or something. And this, um, I was happy to find another German botanical herb kind of book. So this one, I always look for German um, plant books and this has like a combo of illustrations and photos. It's newer, it's not old like the delicious ones that I love um, that I rarely find but when I do I snap them up like a hawk after like a rodent. This is 1980. And the pages are glossy, but they're just, they're really pretty. And I know I can, you know, make use of these. Botanicals tend to get used a lot here because I like nature things. Whoops, okay. <laughs> it is now officially time when the tower is falling to stop putting everything over there. So I'm going to move this and get the last little pile. Okay, I told you this was a big thrift. Oh my gosh, it's because I went to this, you know, wilderness. This was in the Canadian section. It's a green book, so I needed it. And it has acorns and oak leaves on the front. The Discovery of a Continent of Wonder by Rutherford Platt with illustrations by Francis Ellis, 1961. So I noticed it has these nice illustrations, like they're just black and, you know, but they're cool. I don't know if I'll really use the inside of this a whole lot. I'll look for a few illustrations, but then the rest of it I want. It's, you know, colonialism stories that never interest me. So this is probably a religious book. It's German, I'm guessing. Um, I need to get all this old tape off of it. It's going to stress me out being there because it's new tape. They probably put it on just for the sale of these books because this is just coming right off. So I think this has probably just been added um, so that they could bring these books to a sale. And I don't want it there because um, as you let it sit with this tape, this tape's just gonna get stickier and more and more difficult. I would rather have a book that falls apart than is taped together when I'm trying to make a journal because I just don't want the, the stick to rip all this beautiful book cloth. So look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? The gold. And I'm going to, when I use it, I'm going to cut something else out that will go here to cover that text. So it's taped on the inside as well, um, which isn't such an issue. But there are some fun old images in here, black and white. Like it looks like it should be a nature book, but I know it's not. It's probably like a religious storytelling book. I don't know, but I do love the pages. They're really beautiful. Okay. And then I found a school girls annual. I don't always pick these up, but I sometimes do. And this one just felt kind of fun and quirky to me. And I have a few like books that are like about some girl kind of, and I want to have this kind of thing. And I like the, um, the monochrome, you know, style of it. Really fun images. The case of the twisted finger. Found a mongrel in need of a home. These books were like so, <laughs> so strange. The swinging set. Shaped like Twiggy. Okay, what are we doing here? We're holding a can between our feet. <laughs> All right. So yeah, lots of uh, fun illustrations in there. Um, oh, I didn't tell you the, the year for this and I should probably possibly try to do that. Because I know some people like to know these things. This is, um, okay, M-C-M-L-X-V-I-I-I. -I -I. Okay, so it's 19... Um, 68. <laughs> I am a sad human being who can't remember her Roman numerals, but I think that's what it is. <laughs> the herbal, the herbal of the Count Palatine 
an 18th century herbal with over 100 full color illustrations. White book. Always happy to find botanical books, <laughs> of course. This is from, oh, 1985. The Garden of Curiosities. Look at these. Cedar of Lebanon. Mm. This is up my alley. This is my book. My favorite kind of book. Okay, so that being said, that's the thrift haul. I think it was a good one, right? Whew, I'm tired and I'm probably just going to like not do anything tonight. So yawn that being said um yeah i had a great day i did a ton of walking and that's why i'm so tired we did trash cleanup my kids are like you know i had this idea like let's make my kids you know good citizens little citizen scientists and little good people you know it's a good idea <laughs> um and i'm happy i did it but now all they want to do is go on trash bashes and go like walking like millions of miles and picking up trash and I either have to like bend down 80 million times carrying a heavy garbage bag or like lots of like pinching a trash grabber thing. Um, yeah, so I may have just caused like a gigantic uh, problem for myself. I don't know. <laughs> But all in all, it's good. I'm just being a tired lady. So that being said, I have a lot of fun stuff coming up. I'm working on a bunch of things and I will talk to you very soon. I hope you're well and I hope that the thrifting fairies are with you and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.